I'm going to use a 2 inch 23 gauge pen. Uh, it's actually a headless wire basically, 23 gauge. And the uh, gun that I have for this is the Kadex. And this was uh, when they first came out in that length, uh, before I could just get them in a, a shorter wire. Um, and this was a, a high-end gun, an expensive gun against a Kadex. Uh, it's a terrible gun. Um, the most, one of, you know, for my finished guns, it's my most expensive gun and the worst one I've ever owned. It, I have to fire it twice every time. So I have to fire it once, it fires a blank, then I fire it again. I've just sort of worked with it over the years. I've taken it apart and cleaned it up and, you know, played with the driver and I can't get it to work. So um, I have had an opportunity to use uh, Senko's uh, two inch and it works every time, it fires every time. Could have just been a, a bad run. Uh, again, it was early days when they first released it. Kadex has great reviews. Just, uh, it's the gun I bought thinking it was the best there was, at least according to the reviews. And I've not been very happy with it. So I plan on replacing it uh, probably with a, a Senko version of it. So if you see me shooting twice on every one, you'll know why. You can see having a double fire there to get it, uh, at least you know when one doesn't go in, it's kind of a dud sound. I've got a damp cloth to wipe off the excess glue because uh, the stain, if I uh, let the glue dry, the stain won't go in. Okay, so I'm going to let the glue dry up a little bit and then I'm going to uh, sand these before I put the stain on them. So I'm going to do a light sand, just scuffing up the finish uh, to apply a third coat. And um, then after that cures, I'll look at it and see three coats is minimum. Uh, most of the time I do four, but we'll see how it turns out. So I'm just doing a light hand sand with uh, 220. Okay, so that was the third coat, hopefully the final coat. I'll see how it levels out and uh, how nice they look. And then I will be ready to install. When I go to install the floating shelf in the office, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to shoot any video. Um, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I, I cut four strips uh, that will fit in the back of the floating shelf and I laminated 
them in pairs. So I basically, I glued them, a nice coat of glue, I screwed them together, let them dry, and then I pulled the screws out. So I'll go to the office, I've got two shelves, so I'll find the location, and I'll find the studs, and I will then use uh, these powerhead screws, which I use for cabinet install. Um, I'll use those to go back through this and into the studs, and then I will take the second one and I will screw it to the first one with uh, the same power head screws offset. And then it'll be sticking out from the wall that much and then I'll slide the floating shelf onto it and then I'm going to attach uh, through the floating shelf with screws, three screws across the top uh, and I'm going to come in uh, to the second lamination midway and I'll pre-drill and what I'm going to use for that for those screws is I'm going to use the same powerhead screws but I'm going to use a two inch screw and uh, to have it so that it's finished um, these uh, these powerhead screws are from fast cap and they're a really nice bugle head with a with a flat top and they um, uh, square drives and you set them in and then uh, fast caps namesake the fast cap is a a plug basically a very thin plug that's sticky and it will stick on the top of the screw and and hide the screw but the neat thing about it is is they have a drill bit and this drill bit has a flat cutter and I can drill a flat hole that will accept the thickness of the of this uh, plug and the thickness of the screw so that when I stick it on the screw it will be flush and of course this is an oak solid oak veneer and I have stained some to match and put finish on them and the, the uh, drill bit has a, a, a wide um, stop, basically, that spins. And so it's, it's uh, adjustable um, by loosening this uh, set screw. Then I can spin it up and down to the right thickness and tighten it down. And then when I, when I drill to the wood, this hits the finished surface and, and stops spinning so you don't get any burn mark. So basically, so I think the depth is about right, but I would double check it on scrap before I did my finish cut. But I would make the, you know, drill the hole into the shelves. So it creates this very clean flat hole that I can then run the screw in and if you imagine this is inside of a back of a cabinet that's how I normally use them and that one's a little deep I didn't set set it just right but you can still see if I put this uh, sticky plug on Other than I've got it too deep, uh, it's a, it's a, and, I, and I'll line the grain up and have it stain the same. Uh, it creates a really nice finish, particularly inside the backs of cabinets. But in this case, it'll be on the top of the floating shelf, and I'll have them there. Of course, I'll have stuff on, but you know, if they ever need to be removed, they're pretty easy to see, and then you just pick them out and uh, pull the screws. And better than, say, gluing in a wood plug, which would be uh, you know, kind of permanent. But uh, the other thing is uh, those flat screws that I use for a lot of assembly, particularly again for holding cabinets because it's a structural thing. But if I wanted to use a standard screw, uh, you know, a standard like a, a wood screw that doesn't have that flat surface, then I can take this uh, drill bit, make it a little shallower, make it so it's only the depth of that veneer 
and then drill the hole and again this is deeper than I would drill it but then I could take a um, regular countersink drill bit drill through that hole get my countersink set the screw and then use this plug on the top so I don't have to use their screws and I pointed that out because I do use this same uh, assembly technique when I'm not using the uh, flathead screws or the uh, power head screws. Well, this uh, most likely will be it on the floating shelf. Um, again, I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, film the install installation in the office. Maybe I can grab a picture uh, when I'm all done. But uh, so hopefully, you know, a simple little project like this took me a little longer to do because I was shooting the video and wanted to document everything. But uh, I'll let you know how it goes. If you like these videos about these little projects I do or even the bigger projects, uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe. If you want a set of uh, workbench plans, then just click on the link right here in the video and be sure to subscribe and share these videos with others. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.